Bois Keras. Candle nut. Candle nut, yes. You know, if you're allergic to coconut, right? What you can actually use in substitute for coconut is candle nut. Oh, really? It won't really make up the coconut, but it will give you the texture, the flavor. You need to add in a bit more salt. One more time, okay. We're gonna add in some onions now. Just a bit. Two, I think, should be more than enough. Okay, we don't want it too fine, neither do we want it rough. Now that we're done... Wow. Just before frying, right, what we're going to do is just take maybe about one spoonful, right? And marinate the meats? Yeah. Put it together with the meat. Just marinate a bit more. Mm -hmm. We've got the pork. We've got the chilli paste. What we're missing is sliced onions. So we're going to slice some onions. You want to help me with this too? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We will squeeze some lime later on. Mm. And not forgetting our tambriano. Asam. We're ready. Let's go. We're going to do the porco tambriano. We're going to heat up the wok. We're just going to use not too much oil. We're not going to use all the onions. We're going to only use a bit first. All right? We just want to fry the onions a bit, sauté the onions, and then we'll leave the rest of the onions for later. Now that it's sweated a bit, mm -hmm. we're going to add in the chilli paste. It's important to ensure that the chilli is cooked. How would you know when the chilli is cooked? When the chilli is cooked, mm -hmm. the oil will rise again. Oh. We're going to add in a bit of sea salt, and I noticed too that uh, uh, when it's like kind of ready, the the color of the chili has been changed. Yeah, you can bit, tell. Become more orange. All color. right. Yeah. So now when you see the color changing, right? Mm -hmm. Can I add in a bit of water? This is the tamarind water. No. Well, it's uh, beginning to look very yummy as, as the pork gets more cooked. Yeah. And there's a change of color in the meats. As you can see, there's a white. And the darker bits are the uh, pork that's not yet cooked, fully cooked. We don't want it too wet. That is why we add in bit by bit to ensure that we have enough gravy, but not too dry. So we have to ensure that everything is properly cooked, especially oh. when we're dealing with pork. Yes, yes, yes. So when all is cooked, right, we're going to add in the rest of the onion. We're going to give it a final stir. Yes, it's starting to look more white. It has a little bit of a porky smell, don't you think? Yeah. Or fragrance, maybe that's the right word. So there's uh, the final ingredient, mm -hmm. which is? The final ingredient? Which is the lime juice. Oh, yes. So I squeezed about uh, three limes. Mm -hmm. so just before turning off the fire, I'm going to give it a last taste. Oh. See whether it's perfect. You want to try? Wow. So now that that is done, we can off the fire. We can have the honor of putting this inside. And we are done. Oh, and you're right. Uh, the the chili doesn't taste very hot. It's just like a nice little just yes, right. just right. So and, and, the, the and, the, and the sour thing is also just right. Incredible. Oh, we do that too. But not least, to some, it's the best part of the entire dish. Yep. Voila, we are done. So it looks like we can have dinner. Two thumbs up to that suggestion, boy. And let's see whether Philomena is ready. I learned a few tricks. Oh. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm quite amazed, you know, at, at what we were doing, uh, what we started with, and what's become this. It's been quite an extraordinary experience. But there are some tips, like, for example, the 
shallots up, frying the shallots. I didn't know if it put some flour. Mm. Nice and crispy. Mm. And then you wait for it to cool and then you put it in the air Food plays a big role in my life, and the same goes for my family. It brings memories of our growing up days where we look forward to Sunday meals prepared and cooked with love by my dad. When I cook now, I do not feel alone, but I feel surrounded by the recipes, advice and wisdom of the past generation. Oh, hi. I'm Kunten Prera, and I'm your skinny chef. There is an old friend saying that says, never trust a skinny chef. Well, I guess you've got to prove them wrong. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make pang sushi. Pang sushi is a traditional Eurasian bread with pork mince filling. And later on, we're going to meet up with Jin Denker. And I'm going to teach you how to make shepherd's pie and sago gula melaka for our boyfriend, Glenn Ong. Pang sushi is a soft, fluffy, sweet bun that encases a savoury mince filling. This Eurasian bun is usually served at breakfast on Easter Sunday. The celebration marks the end of the period of prayer, fasting and abstinence from meat during the 40 days of Lent celebrated by Eurasian Catholics. There are two parts into making this pang sushi. The first part will be the dough and then later on I'll teach you how to make pork mince filling. We're going to start off by having plain flour, about 500 grams. We're going to sieve the flour and 11 grams of instant yeast. Once we sieve both together, we're going to add in a bit of salt, just about two pinch. And then we're going to add in 250 grams of butter. We're going to mix the butter and the flour together until we get a very crumbly texture. So once the butter and the dough are mixed and we get the crumbly impact, we're going to add in two whole eggs, a pinch full of sugar, and some evaporated milk. Rub everything into the dough and then we're going to let it set for about an hour to let it rise. Once it's properly mixed, what we're going to do is we're going to add some mashed sweet potato that's been boiled. And then we're going to mix the sweet potato together with the flour and then we're going to leave the dough and let it rise. It will take about an hour or so. We're going to put it aside and cover it with a damp cloth. Now, while waiting for the dough to rise, we're going to do the fillings. What this consists of is cinnamon, star anise, cloves, a bit of nutmeg, pepper seeds. We also would need minced pork and diced onions. Now, we need to heat up the frying pan and make sure that it's hot. Once it's hot, we're going to add in the oil. Once the oil is heated up, you're going to add in the diced onions. You're going to let the onions sweat for a bit. You're going to add in the spice. The aroma of the spice is beginning to come up. Then we're going to add in the minced meat. Mix it with the onions and the spices. And once you see the meat starts to get cooked, we're going to add in some dark sauce. And we're going to continue frying. We're going to season the meat with some sugar and some pepper. And the filling for the meat is done. Okay, now that the dough has risen, what we're going to do is, on a clean tabletop, throw some flour. Take a bit of the dough, ensure that you get a ball about this size, spread it on the flour. It's always easier to work with the dough when you have plain flour around, so that it doesn't stick to your hands. Because it's going to rise, we're going to split it into two. Just spread it open. Once you get something like this, you're going to add in meat filling. We're going to close up the corners. And then we're going to place it on a grease tray. We're going to bake the pang sushis for about 15 to 20 minutes. After about 15 minutes, we're going to glaze top part of the pang sushis and leave it in for another about three to four minutes. Once the pang sushi is a golden brown, that means they are done. And 
And this is exactly how it should be. Let's go meet up with Jin Tanker and tempt her with these buns. Welcome to my home. <laughs> very nice place you have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, well, this is uh, quite a bit of the things that I have. I think I saw my family. Your dad's Danka. Yes. And you're Danka. So, yes. Portuguese descent? Portuguese descent. My great grandparents both were Portuguese. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've brought the pang sushis. So, what we need is uh, maybe another main course with like a uh, shepherd's pie. Okay. And then uh, for dessert, we have uh, sego gula melaka. Okay, sounds pretty good. All right. Okay. All right. So, let's Shall get we? to work. Shall we? All right. Shepherd's pie is a dish made of minced meat and topped with mashed potatoes. The term was coined in the 18th century in North England when frugal housewives looked for creative ways to serve their family leftover meats. For today, we're going to do shepherd's pie. Yes. First thing we need to do is actually boil the potatoes. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Shepherd's pie, right? I was thinking. Mm. I mean, I, I didn't know it to be a Eurasian dish. I mean, I used to think it was a, an English dish, actually. So it's actually Eurasian. Uh. When you, when you talk about shepherd's pie, shepherd's pie is actually English because okay. the term shepherd's pie, yeah. they, they used to use all this uh, leftover lamb mm. and make it into a pie. Okay. Okay. Why is it Eurasian? Because the Eurasians, they actually yeah. don't even use lamb. We use oh, beef. I see. see. So, and 